Hi everyone and welcome to this hands-on tutorial. Today I'm going to build a Windows Server, create a key pair and RDP into an Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud Amazon EC2 instance. So before I get started I wanted to just point out that I'm using my AWS Educate starter account. Um, if you're not sure on how to create one of these and you're a college student please go back and have a look at my earlier video. So within this I'm going to click on AWS Educate Starter Account and what should happen is I should be logged into this um, workbench area basically ran by Volcarium and what I'll need to do is I'll need to click on AWS Console. Once I'm in here it gives me access to my own environment. Okay so this is my own if you want to think of it, carved out space on the AWS cloud. So within this environment, you'll notice a couple of key things. The region that I'm in happens to be in this North Virginia, US East region, okay? Um, so again, using AWS Educate, I don't change this. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna launch my resources into this region. And in order to launch resources, the, the one that I'm going to be concentrating on today is I'm going to be launching an Amazon Compute Cloud resource or EC2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on EC2 now. And let's just make this a little bit larger so we get a bit more real estate. And here we can see, folks, that it gives us, with this EC2 dashboard, it gives us a glimpse of what's happening in my particular region here. You can see at the moment I've got um, no running instances, I have no volumes, um, I've only got two security groups. We'll talk more about these when we go to launch the instance. But what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go to running instances um, just to show you my running instances um, section and you can see like what it showed there there's no running instances whatever um, whatsoever so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on this big orange button up the top right I'm going to say launch instances now remember what I'm going to be showing in this particular hands-on tutorial today is launching a Windows AMI a Windows Amazon machine image. So this is this AMI. So what we do here is we get to choose the operating system and the application that runs on this op operating system. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll through the list and I'm actually looking out for this Windows Server 2019 base. And I'm going to click on select this one. Now it's going to ask me for, now that we've selected the AMI, it's going to ask us what sort of system do you really want to run this on? So again, what instance type do you want to run this on? Now again, I am I want to obviously retain as many credits as I can in my AWS Educate account. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a T2 micro. This default one is selected at the moment. And we can see, you know, the, the, the type um, that it is. We can see that basically it's got one virtual CPU. It's got one gigabit of um, gigabyte of RAM. It's got instant storage of EBS, elastic block storage. Okay, so that's where the data is gonna get saved to. Um, and basically we can see that for its network performance, it's got low to moderate. But that should be absolutely fine for my testing purposes. The next thing I'm gonna do is click on next and configure instance details. Now this is a very, very important um, screen because now that we've chosen our AMI and our instance type, we ne now need to say, where do we want to actually launch this EC2 image? And you can see if I wanted to launch more than one instance, I could change this particular parameter here. So I could add a zero here to, to be, for example, I could say 10. Now in this case, I'm, I'm testing and I don't want to do that. So I'm gonna leave that at one. Also you'll notice here, for example, the key, some key fields here, folks, is we have a network basically field. And as you can see here, it's selecting this virtual private cloud and it's saying this default value. So when I set up my account, I got a default VPC and I got a default subnet range. That's in the next field here. So at this moment in time, I'm not gonna actually change this, but in a future video, I'll show you how you can create your own VPCs rather than just throwing your resources into the default VPC and also how you can go about creating new subnets. But for now, I'm, I'm pretty happy with um, just the defaults for now. 
Um, also, you can see it's it's also we're assigning um, a basically a public IP. And if I scroll down here, there's some other options, but we're not going to get into these in this particular hands-on tutorial today. And right down at the bottom, I just wanted to point out there's also um, a section where you could add user data. Again, just to keep an eye on this, these are the types of things. Also here, it shows us, folks, that we can basically, this is the um, root volume that we're going to attach. This is going to be for an elastic block storage device. And you can see in this case, it's basically using 30 gigabytes of space. Okay, and again, for my needs today, that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to click on tags. Something that I always like to do when I'm adding any resources is to put a tag on. So for example, I like to put a name and I like to say, perhaps let's call this Greg's um, server. Okay, um, and again, this is just for testing purposes. So again, what this is going to do is going to put a label on my instances and the volumes that it creates. So once I click on configure security groups, this is essentially putting a virtual firewall around the instance. Now in this case, you can see I'm creating a new security group and I always like to, you know, give it a relevant name. So if this was a web server, I might, you know, say, you know, web server security group. But in this case, I call it Greg's server and let's just say SG for security group. Okay, so I'm creating a new security group. I'm calling it Greg's server SG. And what we can see, um, because this is a Windows instance, what they've done by default AWS is they've basically added a rule for me. Now, again, I could take this out, but in actual fact, I want to keep this particular rule because this is the remote desktop protocol. Um, it's using TCP, the transmission control protocol. I can see the port range it's allowing. So this particular port is uh, reserved for RDP. And here's a particularly important rule here, the source IP. So what I'm doing is I'm opening up this essentially instance when it's created to the world because again, I'm allowing any IP from anywhere in the world. That's fine because again, I'm testing here obviously guys, but I'm gonna go to review. I can revo review all of my settings here and click on launch. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna bring me to this last window where it's saying, hey, in order to connect to this, you need to create um, a key pair. So in order to decrypt basically that um, later on when, when basically I fire up this, I'm going to need to basically log into this. So when launching a Windows instance, Amazon EC2 generates a random password for the local administrator and encrypts the password using the public key. So initial access to the instance is obtained by decrypting the password with the private key and the decrypted password can then be used to log into the instance with the local administration account via RDP. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to create my own key pair here and these key, these key pair I create what's known as a private key and a public key and these key pairs are linked. Okay so what I'm going to I'm just going to call this Greg's key pair and what I'm going to do is I'm going to download that Okay, and that's going to go down into my downloads folder. There it goes. And what I'm going to do, folks, is, and you can see there is a special note here. You, you have to download the private key, the star.pem file, before you can continue. And then it then says, you know, store this securely um, because that's very, very important. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch the instance. Okay, so that's going to take a moment or two. What I can do, if you like, I can scroll down here. I could look at some helpful resources or I could click on view instances. And what's good, this will take me back to my, basically, my EC2 um, section. And what we're going to see is we're going to see our instance state. So at the moment, it's in this pending state. Um, it's going through some initial checks. What we should be able to see very soon is when I'm clicking on this, and you can see this is happening now. I can see that I'm getting a public IP address. I'm getting a public IPv4 DNS um, name. I've also got a private IPv4 address. Um, I've got a private IPv4 DNS name. You can see where I'm launching this into the virtual private cloud. I can see the subnet ID. And if I want to drill into any of these details, um, I can do so just by clicking on any of these links. I can also see the AMI that I used. In this particular case, it was the Windows Server.
So as I can see here, this is good news, it's gone to green and it's now saying running. Again, if I wanted to, to look at, for example, the security parameters like the security group, I could go in and check that my security group and the rules are set up correctly. But in this case, what I want to do is I want to get straight to connecting to this server. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to um, basically come down here. Let's have a look at this instant state. Okay, that's absolutely fine, all looks good there. What I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna click on the server, I'm gonna to go to actions, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on connect. Okay, um, now again, what this will do is it's gonna to try to connect me. Now there's a couple of different ways to get connected to this. For the moment, what I'm gonna show you is the RDP client, the remote desktop protocol client way. I'm not, I'm gonna ignore the session manager for a moment. And what I'm gonna do here now, guys, is you'll see here that I've got a, um, first and foremost, I can see that it's it's basically saying, hey, when prompted, connect to your instance using the following details. So it's giving me my public DNS, my administrator, and it's giving me uh, basically a get password. So what I would need to do here is, as I mentioned before, I need to decrypt this password okay so again I need to get this password um okay so now I was I was hoping that this would well it's, it's not a bad thing that that's happened guys it does take a little bit of time before your server initially sets up and so that you're able to basically um generate this random password that, it, that AWS is doing for us now and then what we'll be able to do is using this key pair from earlier on we should be able to decrypt that which will give me my initial password to log in um, as the administrator user okay guys that's all for part one of this video please join me for part two where we will log into this instance using the rdp protocol thank you